Hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I'm as excited as I can be. And I tell you, I love the Lord. And I know that you love him also. And I know why you love him. You love him for the same reason I love him. The major reason is we love him because he first loved us. When we were not lovable, he loved us. When we were not worth loving, he loved us. And with loving kindness, he drew us to the cross. And here we are today, born again in Christ Jesus, living for the Lord in a day like today. My friends, I want to tell you, I, I want to encourage you to hold to God's hand. I want to encourage you to celebrate being born again. I want to encourage encourage you to be excited because God is doing great things. What, what in the world are you talking about with everything that's going on in this world? Yes, yes, yes. There's a lot going on, but listen, the whole earth is filled with his glory. You just got to know what, how to see it and know where to look. Amen. You got to, you got to be careful as to what you allow to pass through your eye gate and your ear gate and the things that you hear, uh, 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 that, that are taking place. You got to make sure you are uh, fed the word of the Lord and you stay before the Lord. And I tell you what, if you do it, you're going to live a triumphant life. And that is what I'm going to be talking about tonight. You know, on our Thursday night teachings, we've been talking about how to live triumphantly. And uh, it is the will of God that we not be defined by our greatest hurts, failures, and disappointments. It is the will of the Lord that we overcome when uh, devastating things happen. God is able to Take that which Satan meant to destroy you. The famous words of Joseph, that which you meant for evil, God meant for good. Isn't it amazing how the Lord can take moments that appear to be the worst uh, moment of our lives and God can turn it around and in just a few years you have a totally different perspective on it and you see that he was there all the time. Well, my friends, I've seen it. I've, I've watched it. I've viewed it. I see uh, God and he's working it out for me right now. He's working it out for you. And I pray that you stay grounded, rooted and grounded in the things of God. Yes, despite everything that's going on in this world. And we can talk about all of the divides and we can talk about uh, all of the things that are taking place. We can talk about the lawsuit that's taking place taking place in the NFL, you know, uh, I was talking with brother Gary and, and we were talking about just numbers and the population. And, uh, uh, this is one of the reasons why I am dead set against abortion and I do not support anybody in any elected office. This is just me who is for that because as an African American, a proud African American, an African-American who believes that African-Americans have the right to be born like everyone else, who believe that black lives actually do matter. Black lives in the womb matter. Who believes that the first civil right and the most important civil right is the right to be born. As an African-American, a black guy, an American born in this country, born uh, the color that I am. And, and I make no effort to be any other way. I am opposed with everything in me to anyone who supports the slaughter of the unborn, whether they're black, whether they're white whether they are Asian, uh, uh, whatever the color may be, uh, Hispanic, I I'm against it. And, and one of the, well, what are you talking about, Wooden? Well, one of the, uh, the, the arguments that, that's going on today is that certain things doesn't look like America. Uh, we need we need a certain person on the Supreme Court so it will reflect America. We need to have so many coaches in 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 this league or that league so as to ref reflect the American population. Well, well, my friends, have you have have, have you run the numbers? Have you have you checked things out? 
Are you, uh, do you not know that uh, uh, black men make up approximately 6% or, or 7% of the entire American population? Do you not know that black women make up about 8%? percent of the um, American population, our race uh, makes up 13 percent. And the big killer of, of, of our race, bar none, uh, is abortion. Run the numbers, do your homework, check it out. So if we're arguing uh, for fairness and equality and, uh, and equity and all of those things that we're, we're saying that we're for, uh, the, the numbers may, may prove that we may be overrepresented in some ways when you compare us to the general population. We need to grow. Our children need, mothers out there, listen, uh, preachers, speak up. Moms, listen to me. Don't buy the rhetoric of those who are for the slaughter of our people. No one loves you. No one cares about you. No one is concerned about you when they are promoting the slaughter of the unborn. And yes, I hear that talk about, well, there are some people who fight for children to be born, but once they're born, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't care anything about them. Now, uh, number one, th th that is a lie, but no notice what you're saying. You're actually arguing that a person should not be allowed to be born because they're poor or because those who advocate allowing them to live aren't also advocating that they would take care of them for the rest of their lives. Now, my personal experience has been there's no one more generous uh, to, uh, the un to the plight of the, the poor and those who are struggling like pro-life people. If they know, and we, Upper Room is a pro-life church, 100%. And I tell you, we not only fight for the lives of the unborn, but we're there to help that mother with that newborn. Praise the Lord. And we do all that we can. But if we were not, that child still have a right to be born. If poverty if poverty, my friends, was the reason that children shouldn't be allowed to be born uh, 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 in this country, then uh, yours truly certainly wouldn't be sitting here talking to you, and you probably wouldn't be sitting there watching. Think of all the, all the, 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 the sheer number of people who were born in poverty. Oh, my. Poverty is not a sin. Poverty is not a curse. Poverty is not evil, and especially if you're born in America, because no matter how poor you may be, this country, if you were willing to work hard and to do what is, what is right and to trust God, this country will open doors for you. We need to keep our numbers up. I've been saying this for a long time. I'm going to keep saying it. Wouldn't you sound like a broken record? Well, uh, I may. But I, I'm telling you, I, I'm also sounding like a record that is correct. We need our families. We need moms. We need dads. We need to fight for the sanctity of life. Fight for the two-parent family. Amen. I'm talking to you now. I want you to listen to me. And if we do, it's going to, we will benefit from this more uh, than anyone else because there has been an organized effort to destroy, eliminate, get rid of the black male and to destroy the black family. And the biggest culprit has been the, uh, the U.S. government following the doctrine of the ultra left. So my friends, I love you and I thank God for you. I am excited about teaching the word of the Lord to you tonight. God is going to bless us real good. Now, as I close, now you probably knew I was going to bring it up. You probably knew it. You probably was well aware. Check this out. This Sunday is Leroy Jackson Woolard Day 
at the upper room church of God in Christ. You see this drawing here, this painting of me and dad. This was done some time ago as I was uh, his administrative assistant and uh, served uh, under his leadership and at, during the 11 a.m. service right here at the upper room. Oh my, God is going to bless us real good. And I want you to join Pamela and me to, uh, tomorrow night. Brother Gary, what time do we go live? At 7 o'clock tomorrow night, we're going to be talking about triumphant love. You know, we're uh, in that, it's that time of the year. Valentine's Day is coming up Monday. And so Pam and I, we've been married 41 years. And I'm excited about that. 41 years. And I'm asking God for 41 more. Whether I get, get it or not, I'm asking. And uh, uh, I believe the Lord is going to just bless us, and I would love for you to join us. So uh, tune in. You, you, you'll see it announced and that kind of a thing. So thank you for joining me today. Make it a fantastic day. And tonight, meet me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Uh, I get so tickled when we do the little drum roll. I mean, I know it's coming, and I know you know it's coming, but I want you to join me for it. I think Bible study is a big deal. And uh, as you know, my, my style of Bible study, I am an expository preacher. So when we're studying the Bible, we study the Bible. And the Lord blesses us as we walk through the Scripture. I'll see you tonight. Make it a great day.